PIX presents a high school football holiday special. It's the New Rochelle Huguenots versus the Iona Gales. And a very good morning and a happy Thanksgiving to all of you. I'm Spencer Ross for WPIX Sports, along with Aubrey Lewis. And today, the traditional get-together. And Aubrey, who would have thought just a little while ago yesterday, you and I'd be standing out here without raincoats, rain hats, and without our coats on. Turned into a beautiful day. It sure did, Spence. I was ready for it today. I brought my rubbers, my raincoat, and my umbrella. Now, this game, the traditional Thanksgiving Day get-together, nine years in a row, Iona had come up with a victory. Last year, the victory went to New Rochelle High School, and now this year, New Rochelle, number one ranked team in the state, and they are undefeated. Quite a performance. What a turnaround. New Rochelle has done it all this year. Great passing, great running, crisp blocking. It should be great, but I... But watch Iona Prep. They're always tough. Hank Margotta never gives up. And Paul Ryan's done a heck of a job at New Rochelle. Aubrey's going to head over right now to get set for the introductions of the players in today's game between New Rochelle High School and Iona Prep. Hey, I have an opportunity to introduce to you the players, the men down in the pits. Iona Prep, please. Jerry Garvey, senior flanker captain. Jim Bush, a senior offensive guard linebacker captain. Marinoli, senior linebacker, tight end captain. Rick Versace, senior offensive tackle linebacker. Chris Pope, senior, split in. Jimmy Sowers, senior defensive back. We're going to do it, baby. We're going to do it. Hey, what are you? Chris Barrera, senior defensive back. Senior? Senior. Great. Okay. Mike Manuelli, senior defensive halfback. Jim Warren, defensive end, senior. Jeff Tufano, senior defensive tackle. Jim Clifford, senior linebacker. Greg Ricardo, senior, guard, clockmaker. Clockmaker. Ryan Cleary, senior, quarterback. Chris Enoch, senior, tackle. Chris Sweeney, senior, fullback. Doug Keegan, senior, offensive center. Hank Cronin, senior, defensive back. And here's a coach, Hank Margarita. Oh, Hank, it should be a great one today. Another what a beautiful another day. way. Generally, they're trying to get you. That's this it. Year, but this time, they're number one. We're going to go after them. Okay. I'll tell you Introduce your coach. Yes. John Slocum, my offensive coordinator. John? Great. Rod Sajazi, my defensive coordinator. Great. Gardner Wiki handles the receivers. Great. And JB, our trainer. Forever. <laughs> okay, now let's go to the number one team in the state of New York, New Rochelle. Weldon Turner, linebacker, senior. Greg Green, tight end, senior. Kyle Whitfield, senior, tailback. Glenn Zorka, senior quarterback. They're all smiling. Dan O'Donnell, senior defensive back. Steve McLean, tailback, senior. Carl McCutcheon, defensive tackle, senior. Michael Tomac, You're linebacker, foot, senior. Man. Okay. <laughs> Ray Barreras, fullback, senior. Pierre Morger, defensive back, senior. Stephen Vallejo, offensive event, senior. Joe Stump, offensive tackle, senior. Okay, Joe. Albert Zeese, tackle senior. Move up, man. Jerry Monroe, right defensive tackle, senior. Marty Benedictus, left linebacker, senior. Stuart Lord, guard. Guard Grannis on ninth win. Great. Mike Atieri, linebacker, senior. Pete Sutherland, defensive end, senior. Ricky Harrison, junior, safety. James Templeton, the fourth, senior, safety. The fourth. Okay. Clifton Scott Trent, linebacker, senior. Okay. Reggie Franklin, defensive back, senior. Joe Cancellano, center, junior. Keith Sterrup, offensive guy, senior. Right. Okay, Joe. Wayne Watson, defensive back, senior. Hustle, man. Sam Madden, defensive back, junior. Rich Wiggins, quarterback, senior. Don Casale, and senior. Frank Austin, right halfback, senior. Tiger Flowers, fullback, junior. Donald Barron, defensive tackle, junior. Bill Gaines, defensive end, senior. Okay, and Paul Ryan, well, number one in the state, big one today. Well, we won't be one unless we win this one. Okay, oh. introduce your coaches. Rick, get calm. How you doing? Hi, Rick. Holly Henry. Holly. Ted Murphy. Ted Murphy. Jim Relaford. Hey, Jim. Tom and Hi, Tom. Hi. Hey, hey, my man. Okay. okay. Joe McKinnon. Fine. Well, it's a good one. Good to see you, number one. Let's see what you can do today. <laughs> okay. Fine. I hope we have a good ball. Okay. Well, now you've seen the men in the pits. Now we're going to have our st national anthem. Kenny Nichols singing our national anthem. Will everybody please rise for the play of our national anthem. 
forsaken you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glow, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? That was Kenny Nichols, I seen you at New Rochelle. Kenny, you did it, baby. Okay, up to Spencer Ross. Okay, Aubrey Lewis, so we're getting set for the opening kickoff right here at Mount Vernon Memorial Field in Mount Vernon, New York. As the band leaves the field from New Rochelle High School, Jim Wayne and John F. Samuel are the directors, and of course, we're always happy to be here every Thanksgiving morning for this uh, game, which is the traditional get-together between these two clubs from Westchester County, who are kind of just right down the block from each other. New Rochelle High School going against Iona Prep. And I remember back when I started doing these football games, Marty Glickman, who brought you these games for so many, many years, said, Spencer, they used to get 8, 10,000 people out to see this game every year oh yeah bad weather last year the year before the teams were kind of mediocre and now i'm seeing it and let me tell you i believe it and it's great to be here on this thursday morning thanksgiving day 1977 and right now we're getting set for the opening kickoff new rochelle high school undefeated they have won eight they have not been beaten on the season. Iona Prep on the year has uh, come through with a record of five victories. They have been beaten three times, but they are a tough ball club. Their coach, Hank Margata, in his fifth year, he feels his team does have an opportunity to win this ball game. The referee today is Tom Grant, the head linesman, Jack Leonardo, the umpire, Ernie Altieri, and the field judge is Butch Dobson. And getting set to kick the ball off right now for Iona Prep High School as they will kick off to start this ball game. Is Rick Versace. Versace kind of does it all for this Iona Gale football team. And the two men back deep now for New Rochelle are number 22, Frank Austin and 41, Calvin Whitfield. And we are set now for the opening kickoff as Rick Versace will boot it. And fumbled away by New Rochelle, that's Ray Barreras, but Barreras brings it up over the 20 to about the 24 yard line. It'll be first and 10. Coming up for the undefeated New Rochelle Huguenots. And on that one, Barreras was looking up high. The, it's a very light sky today. There's an overcast, and as it, when you look up there, that ball comes out, looks like a dark spot. He Four. misjudged it a little bit and then came at it big. First and ten as we get ready now. On the 30-yard line for New Rochelle High School, Glenn Gawkus, number nine, is the quarterback. The deep back right now is number 41, Calvin Whitfield. And uh, the other halfback is Steve McLean. And Zaukas can throw and pitches a beauty out into the flat complete. As the pass was taken in by number 84, Craig Green has already scored five touchdowns this season. Craig's got real good hands, Spence. The one thing that he does well, he runs his patterns well. As you saw in that play, he went to the sidelines, made his little breakout, caught the ball, and then took his his gain. The gain on that play was somewhere in the vicinity of uh, about six yards. So we'll call it a second and four on the completion to Cray Green. He caught the touchdown pass in New Rochelle's victory over White Plains. An eight to nothing ball game. 
The New Rochelle lineup, left end, number 85, Don Casale, 75, Joe Stump, the left tackle, 61, Keith Sturp is the left guard, the center, Joe Canzanella, right guard, Weldon Turner, Al Bruzis is the right tackle. And right up the middle on the carry is Steve McClain. And he is sit after picking up about three. It'll bring up a third and one now for New Rochelle. I'll tell you, right, right at this point, Iona Prep is digging in there. It looks like Hank Margotta has his boys in that, uh, it looks like a five, five three or five, five two actually. And they're moving, they're doing a lot of stunning. Third and short yardage coming up right here. Ray Green goes wide to the right, moving in motion is Frank Alston. And on the handoff, right up the middle, Ray Barrera, so he is racked back. A fumble, and the ball will go over as it's recovered by the Iona Gale. Good move on the part of Al Brucis, a 6'1", 200-pound senior who actually hit him just as he came to that line of scrimmage. Did not have the ball. It's a muddy field, so we may have some fumbles today. Iona Prep has their chance. So Iona Prep, the underdog, very much so in this ball game, takes over the ball in excellent field position on the New Rochelle 47. Brian Cleary, number 14, is the quarterback. Going out wide to the left side, 33 is Chris Pope. The deep backs are Bill Sweeney and Mike Ferry. And Cleary fires over the middle, incomplete, intended for the number one receiver on this Iona ball club, number 33, Chris Pope. Chris, again, is six feet tall, 180 pounds. He's a senior, number one receiver. He could, he could be a real asset to prep. It looks like both teams want to pass the ball. And both teams have the ability to throw it. Brian Cleary missed a good deal of this season. In fact, Dave Marin did a super job filling in for him. In fact, he was the quarterback in all five of Iona Prep's victories. Cleary is the quarterback today. High formation, Bill Sweeney and Mike Ferry, the running backs. And on the handoff, it goes to Bill Sweeney, a senior, 5'8", 180 pounds, and he gets down to about the 42-yard line. It'll bring up a third and five. <laughs> Weldon Turner is the kind of athlete that time he made the tackle. He's the kind of athlete can hit and move both ways. So he's going to be a real asset on that left side of uh, New Rochelle's line. He also plays on the offensive line at the right guard position. Here's clearing on the keeper and gets down to about the 40 yard line, down to about the 39 before he is hit and spilled by Don Barron, the left tackle. So it'll bring up a third now. Check it a fourth down and two for the Iona Gales. And on that one, number 90, Mike Tomac, he's six, six feet, 180 pound senior. A lot of seniors on this New Rochelle team had some experience last year. Looked good on that play. Rick Versace once again goes back to punt. Frank Alston is deep on fourth down for the Iona Gales. And Versace gets off a good one. That's Alston on the five, and he is it, and still making it at about the nine-yard line, and it'll be first down coming up right now, deep in its own territory for the New Rochelle Huguenots. With eight minutes, 38 seconds left in this first quarter, we remain scoreless. Mike Lammers looked good that time getting downfield. He was actually hit, knocked down, came up, and made the tackle. Good second effort. So New Rochelle will have to put it into play from its own nine yard line. The quarterback is Glenn Zaukas, Steve McLean 31, Calvin Whitfield 41 are the running backs. Moving in motion is Frank Alston. And Calvin Whitfield takes the handoff, gets over the 10 to about the 12 yard line, a pickup of We'll call it just two. We'll say to about the 11 yard line. It'll be second down and eight coming up. Calvin Whitfield's the kind of man who can break it all the way. Good, tight athlete. Had a look there at the Iona prep bench. They're the underdogs in this football game. We're scoreless. And the favorites, New Rochelle, coached by Paul Ryan, have the ball on their own 11 yard line. It's a second down and eight. Glenn Zaukas, he's thrown 12 touchdown passes this season as Alston goes in motion. Oh, it's intercepted, Versace. Rick Versace. 
Sochi, the right side linebacker with the interception and a second turnover, sets up excellent field position for the Iona Gale. What a job Rick Versace did that time. Sally made his move, he saw it, threw the ball, he looked it all away and got it. Now they're in good shape, down on about the 17-yard line, 18-yard line. First and 10 for the Iona Gales. Versace, the president of the senior class, quite a young man, and on the pitch out. Down to about the 14-yard line goes Mike Ferry, a junior running back. He's 5'8", 185 pounds. It'll bring up second down, and we'll call it seven now for Iona. And Wendell Turner was in on the tackle. Wendell Turner, number 53, will be in a lot of tackles. He's the kind of man who can be hit, move off his blocker, and go to the ball. Good nose hit. 78 Bill Gaines, 68 Don Barron, 79 Carl McCutcheon, and 63 Jim Kid Monroe, the front four for New Rochelle, and they play good defense. On the handoff this time, it goes to Angelo Mandanero, and Mandanero is down to about the 12 or 13 yard line, and right in the middle of the pileup once again was Weldon Turner. Weldon again, he's the kind of man, he's there, he will be there where the, that was a good trap block up the middle. Weldon made his move well, and it came to the ball. Of course, that's his job. He's playing that middle linebacker position, so he's actually plugging up all those holes. There he down. goes to the line. Third down, and we'll call it three right here for Iona as they try and get on the board. And on the handoff, the ball fumbled away, and it's recovered as Brian Cleary couldn't get that ball into the stomach of Mike Ferry. And on the fumble, it is recovered by New Rochelle, and they'll take over. No question about it. Well done. And right here, we're going to get a timeout with six minutes, seven seconds left in the first quarter. The score, New Rochelle, nothing, and Iona Prep, nothing. Spencer Ross along with Aubrey Lewis. While we were away, Calvin Whitfield went 16 yards around the right end for a first down for New Rochelle, their biggest offensive play thus far. And it is now a first and 10 from the 26 for undefeated New Rochelle. New Rochelle is doing the thing that they have to do. They have to establish some running game prior to getting that good passing game uh, in order. Caucus uh, cannot rely strictly on the outside pass and the down post passing. He has to get that off tackle play going, and Whitfield is the man that has to do it for him. First and 10 from the 26-yard line. Glenn Zaukas is your quarterback. Your running backs are Ray Barreras, 32 and 41, Calvin Whitfield. And on the handoff, Calvin Whitfield hit right at the line of scrimmage by the middle of that Iona Gale line, number 74, Jeff Tafano, who's been a big surprise. He's 6'3", 230 pounds, and uh, he is, was a young man. They really didn't expect to get that much out of this year, and they have. No, Hank McGuire said that one of the things he did well was he learned to move his body at 6'3", 230, he's a big boy. And what he had to do is get strong, so he's grown to his strength, and I think he's going to be a real tough move for him over there on that left tackle position. We'll call it second and ten, still from the 26-yard line for New Rochelle. Five minutes left in the scoreless first quarter. Zoffis can throw, but he is hit and still. Number 61, Mike Walter came in to throw Zoffis for a big loss and that's one of those things again they knew pass they didn't want to give him time so they blew they blew with the middle linebacker the outside linebacker and number 61 Mike Walter got through made the tackle and now they're back in pretty tough situation with about third and long we'll call it third and 21 the ball back in the 15 a loss of 11 Mike Walter the middle guard coming up for that one third down in motion goes Alston Zaukas on the pitch to Whitfield. The 20. Up to about the 23. Way shy of the first down. It'll bring up a fourth down. And New Rochelle will have to punt the football away. Once again, this is it. Uh, just keep knocking them, keeping them down deep. New Rochelle all afternoon thus far has been down deep in their own territory, unable to make that normal mistake because if you make it, Iona gets that ball deep. Now they have to punt. Can they get the ball out past the 50, down around the 30, where they can start getting Iona in its own backyard? And back deep, number 35, is Angelo Mandarano, who is a junior. He's 5'8", 170 pounds. Mike Ferry is also back with him, and Craig Green will punt the ball for New Rochelle. Wow. And we'll have a flag on that for roughing the kicker as it's taken by Mike Ferry. 
And that one's going to be called back. And instead of getting the ball in New Rochelle territory, New Rochelle is going to maintain possession. They are, and that was one of, for those who are watching that one, it looked like they got a little piece of the ball. The ball went through their arms, but they touched the kicker. You can't touch the kicker, and while they touch the kicker, it is uh, roughing of the kicker. <laughs> and it's going to be a first down for De Rochelle. The first mistake of the ball game by Iona Preff. Iona. 15 yard penalty will give New Rochelle a first down. 15 yards and first a first down. For New Rochelle on their own 40. So now New Rochelle with the ball will have a first and 10 on their own 40. Frank Alston goes wide to the right. The running backs are McLean and Whitfield in an eye formation. The quarterback, Glenn Zarkis. And Zarkis looking Zarkis deep right for Alston. Head coupling. Instead of Frank Alston. Mike Manuelli and Tim McFarland were back Manuelli there to recover. That's one of the things that you can see by, in terms of a personality trait. Glenn Austin likes to go now. He wants to put those six points up on the clock. And of course, he's been doing it all year. He's thrown for 15 touchdown passes. But you can see that time, he wasn't looking for the short stuff, pick away, go it. He was going all the way for the TD. Uh, Aubrey, he throws a heck of a football. He too. sure does. Second down and 10 from the 40. That's Austin going in motion, number 22 to the right. Offside. A flag on the play. And out of bounds goes Zarkis. By number 71, Jim Daly. And check the foul. And let's check the penalty. You called it offside, Orb. Yes, I did. I called it offside on the deep man. They may call it uh, on that last uh, in play. motion or something of that nature. Glenn Zarkis did something that time, which young quarterbacks will have to learn to do. He had the ball. He could see where his men uh, we're in position, so he ran out of bounds on a five-yard or, or about six-yard loss. In that position, he probably should have thrown that ball deep and out of bounds, and then they could have taken the five-yard penalty, and it would have been the same down. So in essence, he lost about uh, eight yards on the play. Third down coming up at 18 yards right now for New Rochelle. They're back in their own 33. Again, Austin in motion. And Zarkas on the handoff to Calvin Whitfield. Up to about the 37, and that is it. And New Rochelle will have to punt it away again. So this Iona defense has done a heck of a job at containing this very potent New Rochelle offense. With two minutes and 30 seconds left in this first quarter, we remain scoreless. We are scoreless in the first quarter. Two minutes, 33 seconds remaining, and New Rochelle has to punt. Big crowd on hand to see this Thanksgiving Day get-together between New Rochelle and Iona Prep and Craig Green to punt. Back deep, Mike Ferry and Angelo Mandarano on a fourth down. The penalty marker on the play. Penalty marker on the play, and I believe it's going to be against uh, Iona on the defense, five yards. Five yard penalty. But it will still bring up a fourth down and about eight on the offside call. You'll notice this one, Spencer. He's kicking actually in a puddle of mud. It's a pretty tough situation. If that ball's either to either side, maybe a problem. Line of scrimmage is on 43. He can really boot him, and he gets off quite a beauty. Good kick. That's Mike Ferry on the 25, the 30, and that is it to about the 32-yard line. Weldon Turner, number 53, is the man who makes the stop, and Iona Prep will put the ball into play, first and 10 from its own 32-yard line. Ferry, for the first time, will be in dry situation, dry territory, so he'll get a chance to have his men make crisp cuts on his passing. It appears that we're going to see a great deal of passing this whole game. It appears that we are seeing something we did not expect to see appear. The sun is shining here in Mount Vernon. This is Brian Cleary. Oh, good hit. And hit and spill back on the 27-yard line. And number 33, Rick Harrison. Number 53 in on that tackle. Again, 
Boyan Lewis on a plate. Weldon, Weldon Turner, one of those kind of guys that we, we're kind of moving our little movements around here. We're up in a press box with a, a, a lot of papers moving Second around. Down, Second and 15, back on the 27-yard line. Pope going wide to the right. Cleary sees it. And now gets up to about the 28, and he is spun out of bounds. Weldon Turner was the first man to make the hit. Number 53, and Turner got helped by Mark D. Benedictus, a six foot 170 pound senior. All right. So it's a third bat coming up. And the ball now on the 28 yard line. So it's third and 14. And Cleary can throw, as we've mentioned. High formation. Bill Sweeney, 22, Angelo Mandanero are the running backs, and a timeout called right here by Iona with a minute 18 left in this first quarter. Hank Margotta called that, the coach. He wanted to, he was looking at the situation. He felt that Clary wasn't reading what he wanted him to do at that time, so he, as a good uh, high school coach, pro things, he called him over there. Now they're going to get it straight. And I'm sure what he's saying to him is, what are you, what kind of reads are you getting from your ends, Pope, when he comes back? Actually, that time, on the last play that we saw, uh, Pope went down, made a little outside move, and then had his man beat. However, Clary just wasn't in a position to throw the ball. So uh, this could be a big play right here. Hank Margotta, the offensive coordinator, John Slocum with his back to you. the third down play for the Iona Gale. Scoreless ball game, big crowd on hand. Chris Pope third goes down. wide third to the right. Mandanero and Sweeney are the running backs. The deep back Mandanero. Oh, Cleary on the fake and a good one, but he is racked up. Number 63, Jim Kidd Monroe was there to make the stop, and that kid is not a nickname. That is actually his middle name, Jim Monroe. His dad was a boxer, and he gave the middle name of Kid. Well, he hit like a kid that time, I'll tell you. <laughs> I've heard a lot of Kid Gavlin and all the other ones, but uh, Jim hit that time. Rick Versace will punt on fourth down, and Frankie Alston back deep in single safety. 42 seconds left in the quarter. And Versace's punt is a short one, goes out of bounds at about the 41-yard line. So just a 16-yard punt. And for the first time today, New Rochelle will take over the ball in excellent field position. Yes, Spencer, that's one of the things they've been looking for and waiting for. A good team like this, you can't put them in scoring territory too early. New Rochelle caucus coming up, looking at the field. He asked that time Cal Whitfield if he could do it to the outside. So again, it looks like Frank Austin and Steve McLean, Cal Whitfield will be running the ball early, passing on about that second down. 38 seconds left in this first quarter. Glenn Zock is the quarterback. On the pitch out to Cal Whitfield. And Whitfield inside the 40 down to about the 37-yard line for a pickup of four. It'll be second and seven coming up now for New Rochelle. Pick up for three yards on the play. Second down. Whitfield missed four games this season with a bad ankle, but he has come back from that, and uh, he's a man that Paul Ryan really needs in that backfield. Talked to him earlier, and he said he's ready. He's got a little extra tape on the ankle, but he'll move. Don Casale, the uh, left end. Uh, in fact, Don, now with New Rochelle, he went to Iona Prep last year and caught quite a few passes in this ball game. The pitch out to Whitfield. And Whitfield down to about the 35-yard line. And a pickup of two, and it'll bring up a third and four. Jim Saris. 
five nine 165 pounder really hit that time. Whitfield had a chance to make that uh, little extra yardage but because of his hit. That's going to be the final play of the first quarter so that's the end of the first quarter here at Mount Vernon Memorial Field with a score. New Rochelle High School nothing and Iona Prep nothing. Back in as we start the second quarter that's Calvin Whitfield going around Good the right move. side. Spence that time Calvin hit some dry, dried uh, grass out there on the outside and he tipped down that sideline and old Levi Jackson of Yale fashion <laughs> making the first down. That was a good move. Down to about the 32 yard line. First down it is for New Rochelle High School, their deepest penetration of the ball game. Steve McLean, 31, 41 Calvin Whitfield are the running backs. And on the pitch out to Whitfield. The 30 hurdles a runner down to about the 27 and flags go down. As Whitfield picked up about five yards. Looks like the penny is against penalties against New Rochelle. The penalty marker on that last play. Might be for a similar play we saw in a professional football game last weekend, uh, hurdling. Yes. That's a 15 yarder. 15 yard penalty against New Rochelle. Clipping. Now it's for a clip on New Rochelle High School. So New Rochelle now back on the 37 yard line. Where they have second down coming up. Make it first down still. on the Iona, 37. And they've got a long way to go for a first down. Zaukas. Zaukas is in trouble. Gets away. Throws down. Oh! What a reception. Glad Zaukas. Throwing downfield to beat the fleet to Frankie Alston down at about the 15 yard line. Well, now that's what you saw. You saw Focus at his best. He got out there, he went to the side, he moved his man out of the position so that he could get the ball, and he drilled it on the run. Good move on the part of a quarterback. Second down now, and that big pickup of 22 yards and about three from the 15 yard line. On the pitch to Calvin Whitfield. Gets a block for McLean, but not enough. And hit just about at the line of scrimmage, and it's going to bring up third down. Good reaction on the part of that whole right side of Iona's line. I'm referring to Daly, Kelly, and Walter. Mike Walter, Gene Kelly, and Jim Daly. Gene Kelly, can he dance? Yes, he sure can. Third down and three right here for New Rochelle. Scoreless ball game early in the second quarter. Alston again in motion to the left. On the handoff right up the middle, Ray Barreras takes it. It's going to be mighty close to a first down. Stop by Walton. It's close to the first down. It's going to be fourth down and less than a yard, Aubrey. Well, this is the one. Now, this Zaukas, Glenn Zaukas, is he the kind of man who will throw or will he give it off tackle? I have a feeling that right up the middle is closed for him. So it's probably going to go off right tackle. Took it himself. First down and plenty. Now to about the nine-yard line, it'll be first and goal to go for New Rochelle. From the nine, this drive started on their own 40-yard line. Check it on the 40-yard uh, line of Iona. There you see it, 10 minutes left in this first half. And we are scoreless in this ball game. Timeout called here on the field by the Iona Gales. Spencer, something about a high school football game. As you notice, this is one of those overflow crowds, whatever... Uh, the stadium holds. That's what we have here. Uh, people are beginning to move in. This is a turkey day, the traditional game. These schools are next door to each other, right across the street. So uh, you, you really have some kind of rivalry. Uh, uh, Chris Pope, incidentally, one of the uh, star uh, uh, ends on the uh, Iona Prep team, is the son of uh, Leb Pope. Uh, 
head of WPIX. So I'm sure all of this makes a makes a lot of sense. <laughs> And it makes a lot of people happy and a lot of people in this area very happy. Well, you were uh, downstairs introducing the players. Uh, I was uh, telling the folks our, our old buddy Marty Glickman uh, had explained to me what this game meant the first time uh, Marty uh, asked me to, to fill in for him some years back. He told me this is the rivalry. These two clubs and eight, 10,000 people come out. Last couple of years, they haven't had that kind of crowd. They certainly have it today. And what a ball game it has been. First and goal from the nine yard line for New Rochelle. And on the handoff. It blows to Calvin Whitfield down to about the seven yard line. Mike Gibbons. Mike Gibbons hit good that time. Although Cal Whitfield got the necessary yardage, he got about four yards on that play. And so now they're knocking on that goal line door. They're at the five yard line, second and goal. Clock runs, nine and a half left in this first half. Still no score. Zaukas will keep it on the ground once again to Calvin Whitfield down to about the three yard line. And a third down. I'm going to give Mike Walter a big boost that time. Mike actually blew the gap, had the tackle, but he was there a little too soon. <laughs> Mike Walter, the 5'8", 180-pound junior, and some of this crowd here cheering their favorites on. On a third down situation right here for New Rochelle. Goal to go. The Iona prep defense digs in. The handoff to Whitfield goes the same way. And Calvin is racked up once again. It'll bring up a fourth down as Barney Rinaldi, one of the tri-captains of the Iona Gales, the left linebacker, and an honor student is there to make the stop. Brings up fourth down. You got a commercial now? Fourth down coming up right here. A timeout has been called on the field. Spencer Ross and Aubrey Lewis here at Mount Vernon Memorial Field. A fourth and goal situation now for New Rochelle. Scoreless ball game. 8.36 left in the first half. Who's he going to give it to? Is he going to give it to Steve McLean or to Calvin Whitfield? He's going to keep it himself. He is in for a touchdown. Glenn Zorkis goes the final yard for a touchdown. New Rochelle is on the board. And the Huguenots lead it 6 nothing. Spence, he did an outstanding thing that time, Glenn Zorkis. He went outside. He talked to his coach. He got it off. He got his composure all together. And then he went in. For the first time, he went on a fast count. They've been going on one or two. And then they went on height that time and went over off that rest, just a bit off that right guard. Good play. New Rochelle will go for the two. Calvin Whitfield was their place kicker after he suffered the angle. They've been going for two ever since. The pitch out goes to Whitfield trying to get outside. He is in. Two points for New Rochelle. And the Huguenots lead it by a score of eight to nothing. That was desire. That last half yard was desire. And we have to give him a lot of credit, Calvin Whitfield, for making it. He was hit in there. He was hit tough. But he pulled right over the goal line, just over the goal line to make it. So New Rochelle has struck first here early in the second quarter. An eight to nothing lead. I know many people watching the game are actually getting ready to go to their own Thanksgiving. So we, we want to wish all of you a happy Thanksgiving and tell you, don't you break away from us. Back deep, Mike Berry, number 44, and 22, Bill Sweeney. As we get set for the kickoff, the Rochelle to boot the football. 63, 63. Wait, wait. Taken by Sweeney, goes right up the middle, Mike Walker. Bill Sweeney. with a game saver right there as Bill Sweeney nearly went all the way for the touchdown, bringing it back to
to the 30-yard line. Great running on the part of Sweeney, and Temple came up with a game saver, as Spencer Ross just indicated. First and ten from the 30 of New Rochelle for Iona. And an arrow. Angelo takes the handoff, gets down to about the 27-yard line. Racked up right there. Dave O'Connell, the left corner linebacker at 78, Bill Gaines, there to make the stop along with 66, Mark D. Benedictus. First and ten now from the 20, second and seven, that is, from the 27 for Iona. Brian Cleary, the quarterback. He sets Chris Pope wide to the left in a slot left formation on the fumble. Cleary's right back on top of it. Chris, sometimes you wonder why those kinds of things happen. And the, the, the real thing there is there was just not a coordination between that center and uh, Ryan Cleary, Doug Keenan. The ball was centered back just a wee bit. He was pulling out of there, dropped the ball, but he's back in there ready to go again. And a third down and still seven. No loss on that play. On the handoff, it goes to Mike Ferry, and Ferry down to just about the 25-yard line. And Don Barron, number 68, the left tackle, who transferred from Blessed Sacrament High School this year, comes up to make the stop. Fourth and five. And a timeout called here by the Iona Gales. Brian Cleary, number 14, the quarterback, going back to the bench to talk with his coach, Hank Margata. His offensive coordinator, John Slocum, and Charlie Nowicki, the receiver and deep back coach. Spencer, in that situation, they have uh, spotters up high, other members of the coaching staff. Uh, they've looked at tendencies on the part of New Rochelle, uh, strengths that uh, Iona Prep has. And so right now, they're deeply involved in the discussion, and they will probably call the play uh, that Brian Cleary would have called anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, that can throw the football. He has excellent receivers. And number 33, Chris Pope. Number 85, Barney Rinaldi. And number 83, Jerry Garvey. Up on that line for the Iona Gales, a lot of you basketball fans might remember the name of Borgia, Sid Borgia, one of the finest officials ever to step on the basketball floor. And uh, Sid's son, one of the tri-captains of the Iona Gales. He's an honor student. Saw Sid just before the ball game. Said, Sid, is that your boy? He says, it sure is. <laughs> and I'm proud of him. A lot of proud fathers and mothers and uncles and aunts. Out here today. Fourth down coming up right here. Larry throws. It is intercepted. Sam Allen. Sam Madden with the interception and that stymies the drive by the Iona Gales as New Rochelle takes over. Plus there will be 15 additional yards. That was a face mask. He didn't mean it, but he got, caught him on the face mask and thus another 15 yards added to that interception. And it gives New Rochelle the ball in good field position. They're at their own 48-yard line and a first and 10 coming up. New Rochelle leads it 8 to nothing with 624 left in this first half of play. The touchdown coming just moments ago as quarterback Glenn Zarkis took it over from the one yard line and Calvin Whitfield went for the two and scored it going around the left end. First and ten. Zarkis on the pitch out a wild one and the ball is recovered by New Rochelle. Number 76, Gene Kelly. Looks like number 84 recovered that ball. You want to fight? I said it was 76. <laughs> in view of the fact that we have a replay, we'll read it in the paper tomorrow. <laughs> There's some of the fans. Uh, not too many seats left in this uh, and There they are, up stadium. on the roof. Well, they're up top. First and 10 now for Iona Prep as they have the ball back in their own 40 following the fumble. And on the handoff, it goes to Mike Curry. And Curry, they go all the way. He will. 40-yard run, touchdown.
Spence, that was a run called desire. He was hit. He kept moving. He kept his feet going. He drove, and he made it. Started from the 40, got down to about the 35 where he was hit. Appeared to be stopped, but just kept going, did Mike Ferry. And now, Iona will go for the two and try and tie this football game up. Ah, the keeper trying to get into the end zone. It's clearing he does. We're all even. And Iona Prop has come up and tied this football game up with 542 left in the first half. There's a timeout on the field to score. Iona Prop eight and New Rochelle eight. Iona has come back and tied this football game up at eight all with 542 left in the first half. And Rick Versace will kick the ball off. For Iona, there he is, number 53, president of the senior class, and quite a young man. And it's taken by Alston. And Alston gets up to about the 32-yard line, and that is it. A lot of people in there on the tackle, including Greg Bricado, and it'll be first and 10. Right here for New Rochelle. The ball on the 31 yard line. We're all tied, eight and eight. All the scoring here in the second quarter and a penalty. Uh, New Rochelle puts the ball back on the 17 yard line for clipping. So New Rochelle forced further back into its own territory. Remember, this is the number one football team in the state of New York amongst the AAA schools. They are undefeated. They're 8 and 0. Oh, but when these two traditional rivals get together, I hate to use cliches, but uh, you throw out the old record book. Yeah, you do. And uh, this is a cross the street rivalry. They don't care what the records are. Craig Green goes wide to the left on first and 10. The quarterback is Glenn Zarkis. The I formation. Barreras and Whitfield are the running backs. And Zarkas is looking deep. Throws for Green. It is incomplete. Batted away by number 32, Jim Saris. Saris only five feet nine. And Craig Green six feet. And Zarkas just kind of lofted it up to him. The ball kind of hung a bit. It was a long throw. And it was on dry ground, so actually if he could have put her out there just a wee bit more towards the sideline, could have been in good shape. But the one thing that you have to understand about that is Glenn Caucus is not uh, afraid to get back there deep in his own territory and throw that ball long. Second down and 10. Once again, Gray Green, the tight end goes wide to the left side. And Zarkis drops back. And throws. And it's intercepted. Intercepted by Iona Prep. Mark Kronick, number 43, is the man who makes the interception. And Iona has the ball deep in New Rochelle territory and a chance to go ahead in this ball game. And the fans out there are going wild. Spence, if you keep that ball hanging in the air, somebody's going to get it, be it your team or the other team. And, of course, that's what is happening right now. That was a little flat pass that he played real well. And a first and ten from the 17 for Iona. Ball game all tied, eight apiece, 444 left in the half. On the handoff, Cleary gives it off to Angie Mandanero. And a second down coming up. Carl McCutcheon was the man there to make the stop. Carl's big man, 6'1", 240-pound senior. Very hard to move him out of that position. Second and eight from the 15. Iona looking for the six to go ahead. Mandanero and Sweeney are the running backs in the I formation. Cleary avoids a tackle. He may take it himself. Gets down to the 10 and up, out of bounds. Ryan Cleary kept the school, saw a little daylight, and picked up about five or six yards. What, what I liked on that particular play, Spencer, was the fact that the receivers, after they realized that Cleary was going to run the ball, 
came back and started opening away for Brian. And Brian moved right down to that position where it should be. Just about the first down. Pretty close to it. The ball on the, we'll call it the eight, less than a yard to go for a first down. Pickup of nearly seven on the play. Get the four-minute warning now that you've got in high school football. Three minutes, 57 seconds left in this first half of play. The sun shining brightly here at Mount Vernon. Great turkey day. <laughs> A fumble recovery and an interception have helped set up these opportunities for the Iona Gales on third down now. The handoff goes to Mike Ferry, and I believe he has the first down. He's got the first down, and now they have to go about, about seven yards for the, uh, for the goal line, so it'll be first and goal at the seven for Iona Prep. Mike Tomac was the man who made the stop, a six-foot, 185-pound senior. The Iona Gales, coached by Hank Margata, I said to Hank yesterday, uh, here we see, leaving the lineup, Mike Ferry, number 44. And number 35, Angelo Mandarino, uh, went in there for him. First and goal from the six on the handoff to Mandanero. And Mandanero stacked up right at the line by the center of that New Rochelle defense, 68 Don Barron, 79 Carl McCutcheon. And that's a lot of weight in there, 240 and 240. I don't know if they weigh exactly the same, but it says 240, 240. Barron 6'2", McCutcheon 6'1". And they're lining up over people like 5'9", Jim Borgia, 5'10", Doug Keegan, and 5'10", Joe Regan. Second and goal from the five. Cleary on the keeper gets down to about the three-yard line. Number 63, Jim Kid Monroe, there to make the stop. Brian made a good move. Brian Curry did that time. Had he pitched the ball, it would have been a loss of about five yards. So he kept that ball. He went down there. He got as much yardage as he could. Now they're knocking on that goal line about three, three and a half yards away. Goal to go for the Iona Gales. The clock ticking away, 2.18 left in this half. We're all tied. Iona 8 and New Rochelle 8. The whole right side's open. Cleary's looking into the end zone. Bryant's now looking for the end zone. and gets down to about the 2. A fumble, but he picks it up himself. And it'll be fourth down coming up. You know, Aubrey, going back in high school football, uh, 10, 15 years ago, third down situations, throwing the football deep in your own territory, throwing your foot, throwing the football. The game has opened up a lot on this level, hasn't it? It sure has. One of, in the olden days, as my youngsters would say, uh, we when did an play, awful lot. You play, <laughs> in the olden days. We did a lot of running, but now they understand the passing game more. They go with what they have, uh, and this could be a big play. Fourth down. It is fourth down from the one-yard line. And on the keeper, Brian Cleary, let us see, touchdown! <laughs> Brian Cleary took it over from the one. A 17-yard drive, which took seven plays. And... Iona has taken the lead by a score of 14 to 8. And now the extra point coming up, Rick Versace. A big play. Will kick it, and he kicks him good. He's missed only three all season. He has still missed only three all season as Versace puts it right in between the uprights. And big surprise, Iona Prep has taken a 15 to 8 lead over New Rochelle with one minute and 50 seconds left in this first half of play. I'll tell you, Spence, you can see it in their eyes. They won it, and they won it badly. They're moving out after it. That time, they went off tackle well. They threw well. Brian did some kind of job moving to the outside. They got a one, one or two breaks and in for the score. 
And Aubrey, considering the fact that it was uh, New Rochelle that scored first, the undefeated team, number one ranked in the state, New Rochelle didn't really have any opportunity to take advantage of that old friend of momentum because Absolutely. it quickly turned around. And we're setting out for the kickoff. Versace will boot the football and back deep for New Rochelle. On the kickoff, number 41, Calvin Whitfield. Steve McClain goes for it, but it goes out of bounds, so they'll have to kick it over again. And the ball will be spotted back on the 35-yard line on the re-kick. Well, I've been doing it, I guess, three now, and uh, far and away. By the way, you're the best. I want to remind you this game is being brought to you by the People's Bank of New Rochelle and Crabtree Toyota. Kicking the ball off for New Rochelle High School will be Mike Tomac, number 90, a six foot, 185 pound senior. Iona Prep will receive. Spence, as Calvin Whitfield said, the word this half is Zoom. Now we shall see if uh, New Rochelle can do some zooming. Back deep for the Iona Gales, 22, Bill Sweeney, and number 44 on the left of your screen, Mike Ferry, who broke that 40-yard run for the touchdown for Iona Prep. Tomac to kick off. A short kick taken by Angie Mandanero on the 15, and Mandanero Zap back at about the 17-yard line. It'll be first and 10 coming up for Iona. Once again, New Rochelle got the ball. Got a little break there. The ball didn't take a true hop. And got him down deep. Iona Prep down deep in their own territory. Iona Prep is the kind of team with Brian Curry at the quarterback who can get out of this little muddy area and into the more dry, the little drier area over to the side. So let's uh, let's see what kind of plays he's calling. Let's see what it be. What, changes they've made at halftime. First and 10 from the 18th, Sweeney 22, 44 Ferry are the running backs, and that's Bill Sweeney, number 22, getting up over the 20. You know, Aubrey, he's only 5 feet 8, he's 180 pounds. Bill Gaines made the tackle on that, but Bill Sweeney can bench press 325 pounds. Would you say he's a strong Oh, he man? is. That's, that's <laughs> superb upper body strength. Spencer, I saw something that time which uh, might tell us what's going to happen. They're doing a little more trapping now. That first play was a big trap up the middle so maybe they've seen something second down and six from the 22 and the handoff once again goes to Bill Sweeney and Sweeney up to about the 25 yard line and it'll bring up a third and three Mike Tomac the right side linebacker number 90 there to make the stop 15-14, Iona leads it. We're early in the third quarter. They're at Mount Vernon Memorial Field. Cleary on the handoff, this time to Mike Ferry. Close to the first down. Stop made by Bill Gaines, number 78. And I believe it's going to be a first down for Iona. But we're going to get a measurement. Yeah, it looks close from here. It looks like they may have it by a nose. Chains are brought out. And it is a first down for Iona on the 28-yard line. This is an amazing series, uh, Spencer, for nine years. Iona Prep took New Rochelle when they won last year, New Rochelle did. And then back this year with the number one team in the state of New York looking for another win, but Iona Prep won't let it happen. Ryan Cleary takes the snap and on the handoff once again to Bill Sweeney. And look at that young man run for daylight. Oh, fumble. Fumble on the play. And it is recovered by New Rochelle. 
New Rochelle has the football, and they have it in excellent field position on the 35 of Iona Prep. Those kind of things happen a great deal, particularly on that second effort. It was a second effort that it made him. He was actually behind the line of scrimmage, should have been tackled, moved on, and was moving to the inside when the ball popped out. Jim Kid Monroe, number 63, was the man who recovered the fumble. First and 10 for the 35 for New Rochelle High School. Lens off as the quarterback. The handoff this time goes to Ray Barreras. Barreras down to the 33-yard line. And, and Jim Daly, big six feet, 190-pound senior, made that tackle. Good move. He stood his ground. He got hit. He stood his ground, and he made it. He stuck his nose in there. Second down and eight from the 33. For New Rochelle, they trail. 15-14 with 9.20 left in this first half. Mikey Alston goes wide to the left. Craig Green wide to the right. High formation. He's looking for Craig Green. He has him. Oh! Pass just a little behind him, and Green had a kind of turn, and Mike Manuelli hit him just as he grabbed the football. Good move on the part of Mike Manuelli. He had to make the move. Other than that, Green would have made it. He was actually catching the ball a little behind him, and that, that was the difference. Third down coming up now for New Rochelle. They need eight yards. Ball down on the 33-yard line, we'll call it, of Iona Prep. Alston in motion to the right. All screen. And a good little screen pass to the tight end, Don Casale. And Casale. Comes up close to the first down. Ball's going to be spotted down at about the 27-yard line. It'll be a fourth down coming up. Now they spot it down on the 29. It'll be fourth and three. Come on, defense. Come on. And no doubt about it, they're going to go for it right here. Oh, absolutely. They'll be going for it. Whether or not he's... It looks like pass. And a timeout called here by quarterback Len Zarkas, who will go back over to the bench to talk to Paul Ryan. And right here we get a timeout on the field with a score. Iona Prep 15, New Rochelle 14. See the all-new Toyota Celica liftback at Crabtree Toyota. They're at 162 Main Street in New Rochelle. Fourth down coming up right here for the New Rochelle Huguenots. They trail 15 to 14. They are undefeated going into play today. We have 8.48 left in the third quarter. They're in Iona territory. The ball on the 29-yard line. And Glenn Zarkis, the quarterback, barks the signals in an eye formation. He looks and fires incomplete intended for Craig Green. He has to understand that there it's mud out there. He went out there, he was in good position, but he could not react behind him. The pass was thrown a little behind him, but because it was muddy, his feet. Coach Paul Ryan of New Rochelle did say to me he felt the muddy field would hurt his club more. And Hank Margata echoed that also. He felt it would hurt New Rochelle more, and you saw an example right there. Particularly on those little moves. See, his, his men are very fleet of foot, and they have a chance to make these little outside moves, a little inside cuts and curls. And with that kind of muddy ground, it's pretty hard to do. First and 10 for the Iona Gales on the 29-yard line, their own 29. On the handoff, fumbled away by Mike Ferry. But Ferry right on top of it once again. And a second down coming up. And a loss on the play back to the 27th, second and 12. Just a matter of a little off timing early in the uh, second half. Ball not quite getting back there at the right time. Ferry was closing when he didn't have the ball. Second down and 12 for Iona. And get a motion penalty right there as Bill Sweeney started to move toward the line as he misread the count. Five-yard penalty puts it back on down to the 22-yard line, and it'll be second and 12. 
little things that hurt you, the little mental errors, the improper timing. Those are the kinds of things that hurt you, but this Iona club is well coached. They will be back. On second and 12, Brian Cleary getting excellent protection. He's going to have to carry it himself, but he is thrown out of bounds at about the 18-yard line by Mike Tomac, number 90, the right side linebacker. He was looking for Chris Pope, who did a long, uh, what we might call a square out. Looked like he was going about uh, 35 yards down and then squaring out. So the ball now down at the 18. It is third and 21 for Iona. Mike Ferry comes out of the lineup now, number 44, replaced by 35, Angelo Mandanero. Chris Pope goes wide to the right. Slot right formation. Third and 21. And Cleary throwing deep for Pope. He overthrew him. He had him free. Chris Pope was free. But the pass overthrown. Jim Temple, number 47, was the man back covering. Fourth down coming up now for Iona. And this a really key punt in the ball game because Versace's got to really boom it. Otherwise, Iona is going to give up the football in terrible field position. And that's what they're trying. They'll be trying to get it out of there. Number 14 is back to punt. Brian Cleary, the quarterback. It's going to be Brian Cleary this time and not Versace. And back deep is Alston in single safety and a good punt. And takes an Iona bounce. Inside the 40 and dead at about the 34-yard line. A beautiful punt. 47 yards from the line of scrimmage. You're probably wondering what happened that time. Well, the coach, Paul Ryan, said to his ball players, if it's not right to you, let it go. It's muddy. It's, uh, it's, the, the handle is not that good. Let's just let it go and let's get that ball. They're actually ending up somewhere on the dry part of the field. We keep talking about the muddy field. Folks, this is one of those kinds of fields that gets tremendous amount of use. Big punt right there by Brian Cleary. Gets Iona out of a hole. First and 10 for New Rochelle on their own 35-yard line. And Glenn Zaukas again looking for Green. Uh -oh. He faked and threw, uh -oh. but Green did not become aware of that fake. We got an interference call on the play. Glenn Zaukas set up a touchdown with that beautiful fake because the defender came inside on Green, but Green didn't go. Absolutely, and on that play, I don't know if Green was felt that he was interfered with, but he had at that time. Good move, it was an interference call. They'll get a first down, down at the, well, how do they figure this one out? I guess it's 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. Line of scrimmage was the 35, and the ball is going to be put down at the midfield stripe, 15 yards. Perfect play. Perfect play call. Quarterback Glenn Zaukas did an outstanding job. Probably the reason it didn't go is because Craig Green was hit and did not make his second effort that time. First and 10 at the midfield stripe for New Rochelle. They trail 15-14. On the handoff, right up the middle, Ray Barreras, the six foot, 175 pound senior, picks up three yards down to the 47 of Iona. Outstanding officiating out there so far. Referee Tom Grant, head linesman Jack Leonardo, umpire Ernie Altieri, and the field judge Butch Thompson. On the handoff again, Frankie Alston hit right by the center of that Iona line. Jeff Tefano, number 74, leading the charge. And I'll tell you, that was real good heads up move by Barney Rinaldi. Barney is one of those kinds of athletes that makes everything. He's the an honor student, team captain. County, he's got it all. And here's a third down from the 47 and seven for New Rochelle. And Zaukas likes to throw, looks for Alston, incomplete. Rinaldi was the man closest to the football, and it'll bring up a, a check at Casale was the man closest to the football, and it brings up a fourth down, so the Iona Gale defense 
holds very well. We have 5.53 left in the third quarter. We hope you're enjoying it. We are. I don't know how many years you said you've been doing this game, seven or eight years. Is this the first time you've been able to take your coat off? Yes, it is. I've been in the rain. I've been in the <laughs> snow. I've been everywhere. I was looking for a puddle of water, but I couldn't find one to stand in. Craig Green will punt it for New Rochelle High School. third quarter Iona Prep leading New Rochelle by a score of 15 to 14 an upset in the making New Rochelle the number one rated school in New York State oh that's something Iona Prep is deep in their own territory and they'll have to get out of there the big breaks are coming about now first and ten from their own ten John Gardner goes wide to the right a little flip right over the middle and out of trouble they get on the beautiful reception to number 83, Jerry Garvey, one of the tri-captains. Jim Temple and Rick Hairston were there to make the stop, but a big gain up to the 31-yard line, 21 yards. And Jerry Gary, that time, Garvey just looked, it was a little simple look-in. He made about a seven-yard look-in, got the ball, and continued on downfield. First and ten once again on the handoff. It goes to Bill Sweeney. And Sweeney up to about the 35-yard line. Carl McCutcheon, number 79, was there to make the stop. Pick up a four, second and six coming up for Iona. Clock ticking away, 449, left in the third quarter. 15-14, Iona out in front. Cleary on the handoff, this time to Mike Ferry, and Ferry up to about the 40-yard line. Getting good yardage on the ground. Jim Kidd Monroe was there to make the stop. It'll bring up a third and one for Iona. <laughs> Brian Cleary's gone all the way at quarterback. He's had a rough season. Bad ankle, broken hand, separated shoulder. But he is here for the big one. And a first down on the handoff to Mike Ferry up to about the 42-yard line. Siona keeps the drive going. 66, Mark DiBenedictus was there to make the stop. Mike Ferry runs with desire. He really does the job. That time he needed an extra yard, and he got it by simply hurling his body through the air. One of those kind of lads that you like to give the ball to when you need that one extra yard. Iona Gales lead in the ball game. They have the football 15 to 14. And Brian Cleary. Pass incomplete. Intended for number 33, Chris Pope. Jim Temple was back there covering number 81. Johnny Gardner also out. Again, it was a little over his head, and because of the footing, couldn't make that extra move to get, get his body up a little higher so that possibly could have stuck to his, uh, the end of his fingers at least. Second and 10 now for Iona. They're on their own 43. They lead 15-14. And Cleary on the handoff to Bill Sweeney. And Sweeney just puts his head down and he goes. And he is a strong young man up to about the 47-yard line. Dave O'Connell made the stop. Well, Dave O'Donnell made the stop, but prior to that, he was hit twice. And he got away from both ball pl players and thus made it a few more yards down there very close and about oh, six yards for the first down. Ball on the 47 right now. Third down. And Clear is not afraid to put it up in the air in these semi-long yardage situations. But this time, on the option, Brian Cleary is mighty close to the first down as he moves into New Rochelle territory down to the 48-yard line. And Ricky Hairston, number 33, and 63, Jim Kid Monroe, are there to make the stop. Both of those athletes made a real good hit that time. He felt it. Now the decision is on the part of Hank Margotta whether or not they go for it or kick that ball away. And it looks as if they might go for it. It's pretty hard. 
They have a fourth no, down, no less point. than one. They're not going to go for it. They lead it by one, 15-14. Brian Cleary will kick it away. Austin is back deep. And the ball is taken by Mike Guterri. And Guterri gets up over the 25 to about the 27-yard line. It's going to be first and 10 for the Huguenots of New Rochelle. They'll put it into play. They trail by a score of 15-14. And here you see it, just two minutes remaining in this third quarter of play. Just want to thank the folks from uh, the People's Bank of New Rochelle and also Crabtree Toyota. These, these are the kind of people who put out that little extra to make things happy. And so, folks, you are being presented this game at their request. Len Zaukas pitches it out to Calvin Whitfield. Whitfield up over the 30 to about the 33-yard line at first down. Pickup of seven. And it'll bring up a second and three for New Rochelle. Spence, you know, sometimes it is good to see uh, people like Crabtree and uh, uh, Toyota and the uh, People's Bank uh, who, who do that little extra to, to bring things to us. Sometimes we, they go un, uh, unnoticed, but uh, we just want to say it again. And we want to thank them for helping make this possible. Second down, the pitch out to Whitfield. He goes either way, and Whitfield racked up behind the line of scrimmage. Big tackle in there. Number 75 for the Iona Gales was the man who was there, Greg Cirillo. Gene looked like Gene Kelly had a little piece of him also. Number 76. Third down and five, a loss of one in the play. Back to the 32. High formation. Green goes wide to the right. Zaukas looks for Green. It fires to Craig Green. It is complete. Craig Green using his size and getting great position on uh, two Iona Gale defenders to take in the reception first down in Iona territory on the 42. Gifted athlete. He got up there in a crowd, warded him off with his body, took it in and looked it all away. Tremendous concentration on that play. Plus it put him in good position. 23 seconds left in this third quarter. New Rochelle with the ball. They trail by one, 15 to 14. Zaukas fires it out of bounds. Green was the man there, but he was covered very, very well by number 30, Tim McMullen. Second down coming up from the 42 of Iona. And seven seconds remaining in this quarter. So last play of quarter number three coming up right now. Glenn Caucus, as he uh, looks downfield for his primary receiver, generally someone deep. Sometimes his secondary or even third receiver is in pretty good shape. As he grows in experience, he'll find that person a little more. This time Green goes wide to the left side on second and ten, and Zaukas looking for him again. Fires for Craig Green, and Green slipped but gets back on his feet and has it down to the five to ten yard line. Craig Green once again, and this time a 32 yard reception. Spence, he slipped twice. <laughs> <laughs> what a play. Good athlete. Uh, great balance. He came back. That's what it's all about. And the quarter ends. And that is the end of the third quarter here at Mount Vernon Memorial Field. The score, Iona Prep 15, and New Rochelle has 14. Spencer Ross and Aubrey Lewis at Mount Vernon Memorial Field. A happy Thanksgiving to you. We're enjoying this football game. The field may be muddy. The sun is shining. And the holiday spirit before a packed house here in Mount Vernon. An undefeated New Rochelle as we go to the final quarter. Trails in the ball game, 15-14. They started this drive from their own 27-yard line. And two big plays. Passes from Glenn Zaukas for 26 yards and for 32 yards. Both to Craig Green, who has already caught a 45-yard pass for a touchdown, and it is goal to go on the 10. In the dry end of the field. Hey, girl, give me 
Saucus on the handoff. It goes to Ray Barreras. He gets down to about the seven yard line. There's those cheerleaders making it happen. Second, the ball now placed down at about the eight yard line. Second and goal to go. I do not believe they can make a first down off. And about the two inch line. <laughs> There's the pitch out to Whitfield. Tries to get outside, gets down to about the six yard line. Number 23, Nick Scaridi, up from his left cornerback position to make the stop. Third down and goal. Say so immediately following this high school football holiday special, Hans Christian Anderson will be seen in its entirety. So you stay tuned for that. Ball is now on the six yard line. The Iona defense digging in. Goal to go. 10 minutes, 40 seconds remaining. Iona prep holding out to a one point lead. And New Rochelle looking to move out in front. And about 20,000 people, or 5 million people, wondering what he's going to call this time. See if he puts it up in the air. He's looking for green, looking for green, firing green, touchdown! Great athlete. Oh, Craig Green catches his second touchdown pass of the day. This one a six-yarder. And New Rochelle has taken the lead with 10-15 remaining in the ball game. 20 to 15. He knows where his bread and butter is. Let me tell you, he looks for that fella, Craig Green, every time. Caucus to Green is one of the most potent pass combinations I've seen in high school football. Green is the kind of athlete who goes out there and knows he can do it and does it. And Caucus can lay it in there. They'll go for the two to Rochelle. They've got the lead. Zaucus fumbled it. Fires incomplete. And that is a big play in this ball game because Iona now trails by only five, six points would give them the lead. That extra point goes for two, it's now seven. And they gotta kick the extra point to tie or think about winning it by going for the two. Absolutely, big play. But again, Glenn Caucus went with what he does best. You're probably wondering why he didn't go off tackle or maybe skirt the ends. The reason he didn't do it is he's going with his his weapon. His weapon is to get back there, look for Green, look for his other receivers, and whip that ball, and that's what he's doing, and that's why they are number one uh, in the state of New York right at this point. I know there's some other folks uh, out in New Jersey at Westfield and all those other places who would like to have a little piece of this club. That was a 73-yard drive. And 64 of those yards on passes from Zaukas to Green on three plays. Tomac kicks off. Up to about the 35-yard line. Chris Pope brings the ball up. And it's first and ten. Now coming up for the Iona Gales at the 35. Again, want to thank those folks at People's Bank of New Rochelle and Crabtree Toyota. A great opportunity for, uh, for perhaps some of you sponsors to think about taking part in a high school football program. Aubrey and I love being here. This is the Roots. Absolutely. That's where it all starts. There's the pass that is complete to John Gardner, Brian Cleary. That's the old belly series, isn't it? He just hung it in there on that fullback and took it away from him and then whipped it back out there. Gardner pulled it in. And the ball is at midfield. Pickup of 17 yards. Rick Harrison was the man who made the stop. Cleary this time on the handoff goes to Bill Sweeney and he is into New Rochelle territory down to the 47 the big middle linebacker Weldon Turner is there to make the stop second and seven. This high school football is really something it's amazing we've done, done just one game this year uh, I'd like to see us get back to that old nine game schedule and 
And for those who are out there who wish to project it, just make sure you call for your uh, advertising dollar. Nine minutes, 10 seconds remaining. Cleary oh, on the good pitch. Hit. And good defensive play by Dave O'Connell, who tripped up Mike Ferry back behind the line of scrimmage. And a loss of three on the play. It'll bring up a third and 10 now for Iona. Bill Gaines was the reason for that loss. What a shot he gave to Ryan Cleary. Ryan had to get rid of that ball earlier than normal because Gaines did the job. And that's where that cohesive unit is. That moving now, making it happen so the other guy can just make it, cut him down. Third down coming up. Cleary over the middle. We got an interception. Mark the Benedictus deflected the ball. And it came right down into his hands. And on the interception, it is New Rochelle football. Spence, Ryan didn't see him. That's all there is to it. His man was clear, but he didn't see the man right next to him. And that's, again, looking downfield. He hit them. The hands went up, stopped it. Interception. New Rochelle with the ball. And they have it on their own 43-yard line with eight minutes and 10 seconds remaining. And New Rochelle leading in the ball game by a score of 20 to 15. Are they going to get conservative now? I do not think so. On the handoff. That was Ray Barreras. And Barreras gets up to about the 48-yard line. Glenn Caucus couldn't be conservative if he were wearing a black tie out there. He's the kind of athlete that just likes to keep things happening. And with uh, Calvin Whitfield and uh, Craig Green on your team, you, you just have to stay that way. We will not see them conservative this game. Green goes wide to the right on second and five. And the handoff right up the middle. Man may go. This is Ray Barreras. Barreras inside the 30 down to the 28 yard line. Mike Manuali, the monster back, finally trips him up with a big first down and a gain of the play of 24 yards. Right. Remember again, immediately following this high school football holiday special, you'll be seeing Hans Christian Anderson in its entirety. I've got a lot of hand pissing and energy uh, at home, I tell you, while I was coming up. <laughs> they gave it hands and hands and hands. Seven minutes, 19 seconds remaining. A timeout's been called on the field. Big gainer by Ray Barreras. Barreras and Steve McClain kind of alternate at uh, one of the running back positions for Paul Ryan's New Rochelle Huguenots. Calvin Whitfield you see in there just about all the time, and he's really the mainstay of the backfield. What Barreras has is the ability to hang tough. He's the kind of athlete who, who, who once you put him out there, you don't expect him to go the 60, 70 yarders, but you, he'll churn up that short yardage simply because he runs with abandon. He runs with, with his body tight, and when you hit him, you've got to bring him down or he's going to get you that extra yardage, and that's what you need in order to compensate for your your, your good passing game. You know, I want to mention Dave Levy of Iona, possibly the finest running back in this county, perhaps in the state, out of action with a broken foot. Uh, the top scorer in the county up until the point when he went out with that injury. I know you saw him. You said, David, what happened? <laughs> One of those great athletes. Sorry he's not here today. And Iona, of course, has missed him. Here's the handoff once again going to Barreras, and he is hit behind the line of scrimmage. And Iona defense coming up very, very tough. And a second down and 12. Could it be that Paul Ryan is trying to get Glenn Caucus to be conservative? Iona defense has been tough all day. They play that 5-2, Tim Ormond, Jeff Tafano, Mike Walter, Gene Kelly, Jim Daly. Linebackers, Barney Rinaldi and Rick Versace. Zaukas not conservative here. That is Green. And knocked away by Mike Manuali, who just deflected that football, and Green almost had himself a third touchdown pass. He sure did. And I'm sure he's a little disappointed because the ball got there in spite of him. He had his hands together, and he was actually not catching the ball, but the ball was there, and you could see him punch his hands together as we did up in the booth. Not that we're cheering for him. We're just offensive-minded. Third and 10, the ball on the 29-yard line. 
Let's see who Zakas looks for this time. Once again, Green wide to the right. He's looking for him again. In trouble. Over the middle. Incomplete. Right off the fingertips of Calvin Whitfield. Who was there? And there was a case of the alternate receiver. And Zaka saw him and he found the man. Absolutely. And there, and, and there was a reason for that. Green went down, made his move. Calvin hung over in the same territory so he could find him without having to look to another part of the field. They were both in his in his in his vision, so to speak. So and he did a good job. I thought. Calvin was just taking that extra step and the ball was coming up back about four inches too short. So fourth down coming up and of course this deep in Iona's territory New Rochelle is going to run the play or put it up in the air. They lead 20 to 15. We have six minutes 25 seconds left in this football game. New Rochelle undefeated trailed at the end of the half and then here in the fourth quarter. It was a touchdown pass from Glenn Zarkas. His second one of the day to Craig Green. One that he set up earlier on a 32-yard pass to Craig Green to give New Rochelle a first and goal on the 10-yard line. Here we go, fourth down. Big Green play. wide to the right. Frankie Austin wide to the left in an I formation. The Huguenots of New Rochelle. Get him, get him. And Zarkis looking for Green. He fires. Manuelli is there. Is it? Incomplete. Mike Manuelli this time got more of his hand in the football, and Green could not hold on to it. And there you see the sportsmanship. Gray Green patting the hand of Tim McMullen, who was also back there, saying, good play. Absolutely. But I'm going to get you next time. Absolutely. You <laughs> pat his hand, you say nice play, but I'll be back again. And I think that's what it's all about. And that's what sport is all about. When you're in there, you're trying to win. Winning is important. But believe me, don't believe that winning is everything. A lot of great athletes come out of these schools in Westchester County. You mentioned, of course, Richard Roundtree, who's a pretty good tight end uh, at this school. Absolutely. In fact, uh, you know, the cheerleaders told me that. I said, hey, what, what, what do you cats have here was pretty good. And one said Richard Roundtree. And, of course, we go right to the, uh, to the theater. And see the, the Shaft series and uh, Richard Roundtree, in fact, was a tight end on the last undefeated team that New Rochelle had, which was back in 1960. What a job he did in Roots. I heard that. <laughs> Watch it, you get me to crying up here in the booth. <laughs> Six minutes, 15 seconds remaining. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Spencer Ross along with Aubrey Lewis. John Gardner coming wide to the right now for the Iona Gales. Chris Pope goes wide to the left. The running backs are Sweeney and Ferry on first down. This is Mike Ferry over the 30, 35 to about the 37-yard line. He's going to be close to a first down. Good Chris blocking that time by number 64, Doug Keegan, and number 54, Jim Borgia. What an outstanding job. Second and two now. We'll call it a long one from the 37. Clock continues to run. 5.46 remaining. Slot left formation. Cleary. And here's John Gardner on the reverse. Gardner lined up on the slot on the left. And Cleary with a little bit of a flea flicker. And Dave O'Donnell made the stop. But it's a first down for the Iona Gales. And they are up on their own 47-yard line. Pick up a of 10. Call it a play flicker, call it a, reserve, a reverse, call it a counter, but it worked. It worked because they executed that time. Johnny Gardner coming wide to the right, Chris Pope wide to the left. Clock runs, 5.23 remaining. Iona trailing by five. Handoff right up the middle goes to Bill Sweeney, and he is into New Rochelle territory down to about the 49-yard line. And Mark the Benedictus, number 66, the left side linebacker, made the stop. As you know, Brian Carey now is doing counters for the most part. He's making the one back and going. There's a scoreboard. And the scoreboard shows that clock ticking away, 4.58 remaining. Ball at the midfield stripe. A long way to go for the Iona Gales. Handoff this time goes to Mike Ferry. And he is down to about the 46-yard line. 
Jim Kid Monroe, number 63, made the stop. Brings up a third down now and three for Iona. Here's a big play for the Gales with 420 remaining. John Gardner once again. He's going to be wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Number 90, Mike Tomac, from his right side linebacker position, led the charge. And it becomes fourth down now for Iona. And they're going to have to put the ball in the air right here. A loss of two. It's a fourth and six. Shows you where that old defense can help you. That was a good charge on the part of the right side. They're calling a timeout now. Brian Curry is coming over to talk to Coach Hank Margotta. They've got the person up in the booth there listening in, talking from upstairs. So actually what he's getting now is he's getting a full run of what the trends are for the New Rochelle team. He's also getting some idea as to what play he should call. He may get a substitution as he is now. They're putting in number 85. Ronaldi. So it looks as if they've got it all together as he runs out into the field with the play. Under this kind of pressure, there's a good chance that he may forget it. Fourth down and six coming up for New Rochelle. They trail 20 to 15. We have four minutes remaining in the football game. He's seen the trends. Which has been as good as any high school game I've ever seen. Oh, great. This is excellent football. Good, good line play. And if the, if the college coaches are around, they're picking out various people in terms of size and speeds and the agility, the ability to move in and out, second effort. Here's the fourth down play coming up. Brian Cleary. He is in trouble. He throws deep for Chris Pope. Pope slips and the ball is deflected away. Good defensive play made by Jimmy Temple. But there again, right in that spot, the muddy part of the field, and Chris Pope did Absolutely. not keep his balance. If he had his balance, it could have been another story. Again, that's all part of logistics. Where are you on the field? How can you get there? Whether or not you're going to be throwing the ball to a man who is in the middle of the mud or not. New Rochelle gets the ball back. They get the ball in fairly good position. The passer will be in the mud. However, the athletes, the ends, and the halfbacks who are going out for those passes will be on dry territory. Could help New Rochelle in this series of play. They have it on their own 48. 349 left in the game. New Rochelle leads it 20 to 15. Alston goes in motion to the right. And on the handoff, right up the middle goes Ray Barreras to the midfield stripe. In this football game, it was New Rochelle taking a eight to nothing lead, and then Iona coming from behind for two quick touchdowns in the second quarter to lead it 15 to eight. Seconds before the end of the first half, Glenn Zaukas hit Craig Green for a 45 yarder. It was 15, 14 at the half, remained that way until this fourth quarter when Zaukas and Green teamed up again, 26 yards and 32, and then the six yarder for the touchdown, which has made it 20 to 15. Zaukas hands it off to Barrera again, down to about the 45-yard line. Mike Manuali is there to make the stop. It'll be third and three, and they own a defense. Has to come up strong here. Has to come up strong in this position. Manuali made an outstanding play that time. And he had a little more speed to get to the outside. Marcus could have possibly gone for another four and a first down. However, now with the ball third down, this is the big play. They have to keep it out. And it looks like Green is wide to the right or at the top of your screen. Big play because it is a third down and the clock is running. 2.40 remaining of the half and right at the line of scrimmage, Steve McLean is hit by Jim Daly, the junior right end, number 71, six feet, 190 pounds, and that Iona defense came up strong right there. One of the big plays of his career now I'm pretty sure there's a time left on the scoreboard. There's two minutes and 10 seconds left. 20 to 15 is the score. New Rochelle with the ball. And New Rochelle going back. Green going back to kick the ball. 
He's standing about oh, 15 yards back. Craig Green will punt it. Tim McMullen back in single safety. A low snap. Green gets it up, and what a boomer he does. That's McMullen on the 15. Tries to cut back, hitting about the 18-yard line. Weldon Turner, the middle linebacker, who plays both ways, offensive right guard, defensive middle backer, and also on the special teams, makes the stop. We got a timeout on the field now with a minute 41 remaining. The score, New Rochelle 20 and Iona 15. Their final opportunity, a minute 41 left in the ball game. Want to thank our spotter, Anthony Caldwell from New Rochelle for really helping us out here. Brian Cleary's pass deflected right over the middle intended for Chris Pope. And the defense of New Rochelle coming up. Rick Hairston, number 33, there to bat it away. Second down coming up. Eight seconds go by in that play. A minute 33 left in the ball game. And remember, immediately following this football game, Hans Christian Anderson will be seen in its entirety. Iona has to get a big play now. They have to get in, in position to go for the short yardage, which they do best. On second down, Cleary's going to have to throw again. The big rush, Tomac after him, number 90. Cleary better get out of bounds, and he does. Big rush led by number 90, Mike Tomac of New Rochelle. And it now brings up a third down play. Some of the people are leaving the stands, but no one is leaving the field. They are ringing the field all around it. A sellout standing room only crowd here at Mount Vernon Memorial Field for this New Rochelle Iona get together. Back in the 16 yard line now, third and 11. Big play here for the Gales of Iona. What a job Coach Hank Margotta's ball club has done today. And Paul Ryan's New Rochelle ball club, they have been super. And once again, oh, Bryant clearly could, clearly could not withstand the big charge of the New Rochelle front four. Don Barron, number 68, 78, Bill Gaines piling in on him. A minute nine remaining. Timeout called by Iona. And with fourth down coming up, they're going to have to try and run a play, I would think. Or else punt it away and then hope for the fumble. Again, he's going to the sidelines. Okay, coach, we have one shot at it. One shot to get 10 more yards. What shall we do? That's Hank Margotta on the right of your screen. The coach of the Iona Gales, his fifth year as the head coach. Got to give credit to Paul Ryan, uh, his New Rochelle ball club, the defensive coach, uh, the defensive coordinator of New Rochelle has been at the school for 15 years, Ted Murphy. He said, this is the best defensive club I have ever had. No doubt. Well, he's doing the job this year. He's got plenty of beef up front. He's got those fleety backs in the backfield who like to hit. They're still clean. As you can see, they're just out there popping away. Uh, you see those men in the pits up front who are a little dirty. Uh, I just recently had a, a BM 25 year. You know, 25 years ago, we're in high school and playing ball, and we all got back together, and uh, some of the folks look a lot different than what they did uh, <laughs> those days. Got to take care of your belly and keep that nice and trim and neat. Here we go, fourth down and 19. Brian Cleary is looking. Flips one out into the flat. That was not the play. The defense was there. Angie Mandanero caught the football, but he was immediately racked up by number 88, Sam Mannon, and the ball will go over to New Rochelle, and they just have to kill the clock this final minute, and they will finish the season undefeated at 9-0. What they're looking for is the ability to get right in there once again. They want six more points. That was a little screen play. Screen left, but no one was fooled. 20 to 15, New Rochelle out in front with a minute remaining. Clock running now, 49 seconds left, and a couple of running plays, and this one will be history. And Zaukas just falls on the football, 
I want to thank everybody responsible, our executive producer, Don Carney, our director, Jimmy Hunter, Lev Pope, the uh, president of the WPIX TV. Clock running down, 30 seconds remaining. Tony Caldwell, who I mentioned, our spotter up here, all the officials of all, both schools, New Rochelle's coach, Paul Ryan, Hank Margata, the head coach at Iona, and of course, our sponsors for helping to make this possible, the people at People's Bank of New Rochelle and Crabtree Toyota. Second down, 10 seconds remaining. This will be the final play of a super football game. Darkness falls on it. That's going to be it. Uh, and the, the lone thing that mars the game, a couple of youngsters just get a little excited. The clock runs out. The gun sound. That is it. The final score once again, New Rochelle 20 and Iona Prep has 15. Aubrey, well, it's thank, been super. It's been super, Spence. Let me thank little John Lewis and Stefan for helping us stop the game for commercials. My boy Stefan making his debut at the age of six. John's son, uh, Aubrey's son, John, is now 12, and he has been the man who... Uh, I was breaking my son in today as far as the commercial breaks were concerned. So that is it. The final score once again, New Rochelle 20, Iona Prep 15. For Aubrey Lewis, this is Spencer Ross saying so long for Memorial Field in Mount Vernon, New York. You stay tuned now for Hans Christian Anderson to be seen in its entirety next on Channel 11.